Without a doubt, the most common questions we get asked here at Snow Tracks all relate to suspension. How do I set it up? Why does my sled not ride good? And how do I properly make adjustments? Apparently, modern snowmobile suspensions aren't quite as simple as some people think they are. No kidding, today's snowmobile suspensions are complex feats of engineering. The way they function almost boggles the mind, and when you add current shock technology into the mix, it's not hard to get lost. But you don't need to call Stephen Hawking to get your sled to ride right. You just need to follow a few simple and universal steps. The first thing you need to do after you pick up your new scooter is verify the shock settings. Believe it or not, many snowmobiles come right from the factory with uneven compression and rebound settings. Making sure they're all set to about halfway will at least get you started on even ground. The next step is one most people overlook, and it can have as big an effect on the overall ride of your sled as getting your clickers set to where you want them. You need to get your ride height set to the manufacturer's suggested level. Shocks and suspensions are designed to work most efficiently and effectively within a specific range of their travel. This is different for every brand and every style of suspension, so read your manual to find out where your ride height should be set. Ride height is adjusted using the springs, and despite what many believe, this is the primary purpose of the springs, both front and rear. Their job is to hold the sled at your preset height and return it to that height after the suspension has been cycled. Measure your ride height as per your manual's instructions and take your measurements with the rider on board. Some shocks have cam style adjusters with only a few settings. Others have threaded collars that are infinitely adjustable. Whatever the case may be, if you find you can't get your spring set tight enough to achieve proper ride height, don't worry. Your dealer can order and install heavier springs. The next step in your suspension setup journey is again one most people just skip altogether. You need to start at zero or full soft on your compression clickers. Most shocks come from the factory with the compression set at about 50%. The problem with starting your setup at this point is that it's hard to get an accurate reading of what effect your changes up or down are actually having. Starting with your compression set at zero gives you a baseline to work from. Now we get to the fun part. Once your ride height is adjusted and your clickers are set to zero, it's time to go riding. Find a realistically bumpy section of trail and ride through it at the speed you would normally ride. If you feel the sled bottoming, add in a few clicks of compression, but don't touch the springs. Repeat this process until the sled is resisting bottoming, but remaining plush enough to still be comfortable. Keep in mind, your sled should bottom on the biggest bumps. That way, you know you're using all the travel you paid good money for, and you want to get your money's worth. Once your compression is set for your average riding situations, you can use the compression clicker knobs to fine tune the ride for different trail conditions. If you can feel the trail getting rougher and you're bottoming more than you think you should, simply spin up a few clicks of compression. When the trail gets smooth again, turn the knobs back to your original settings. Now that you've got your ride height and compression settings taken care of, you may need to tweak the rebound settings just a bit. And this is where most riders get overwhelmed and just give up. Rebound is what controls the speed at which the shock extends back to your ride height after it's been compressed. An optimal rebound setting is one that lets the skid frame or the skis follow the contour of the ground at average trail riding speeds, but doesn't let the shock extend too quickly, which would make the sled feel like a pogo stick, or too slowly, which would make the sled feel overly stiff. Slow rebound causes a condition called packing up. If the suspension can't rebound fully before it hits the next bump, your suspension will continually get shorter until the sled is essentially riding on only the last few inches of travel. Taking away some rebound damping will once again allow the suspension to extend back to your static ride height before it absorbs the next impact. Once you have your ride height, compression, and rebound dialed, it's a really good idea to make some notes of where it's set. That way, if you ever have to remove a suspension component for maintenance or reset up your suspension to carry more weight or for different riding conditions, you can find your way back to your optimal setup far more easily.